I changed a lot. I fixed a lot. Um, I'm a designer. And so because of that, I, I like changing stuff around. So when I designed this, I made everything black and white, white walls, black details. I put this walnut color wood um, and then the really dark counters because I wanted dimension. And by having the brown wood and then the, the darker counters, Espresso sort of added this other little thing. Like the more stuff you can have going on um, in an orderly harmonic way, the more, um, the bigger the space feels between that and shrinking your proportions. My kitchen is 18 inches by 34. So it doesn't look or feel small, but it's considerably smaller than a standard kitchen. I had to get a special fridge and I got one with, uh, that was 15 inches deep because the compressor could be, mine is mounted above the wheel wells. This other little counter, I made it to fit the oven I thought I would be using, but I ended up not using it. It looked too big, proportionately speaking, even though it was a very small um, air fryer, it looked, it looked big. So I made this one 13 inches deep by I think 27 or 28. So I have a lot of floor space so I can, I can change it around. And I have several different looks. I have the original look where it's the dinette with the, the red cushions and some pillows. Then I have my winter look, which is Buffalo check, uh, with some pillows. Then I have the midsummer red with, uh, white stars. Then I have this sort of bare, more modern, less busy look of cinnamon bedspread with the black, black and off white. Anyway, so like most people aren't going to do that, but I really like the, the vibes, the different vibes. I mean, it's a small space. You want to do fun things. I built my cabinets around my containers and I made, I bought plastic containers and then I wanted them to fit tight in so that they wouldn't have as much of a chance to fly around. And I put these elastic things there to hold it. This one cabinet that uh, opens and has doors because the wall is angled there. I had to put these elastic bungee cord with little tiny eye loops uh, and then the cord is threaded through them. And I got Wee Boost. I put it there. I'm happy with it 80% of the time. I really don't know, uh, but I'm glad I got it. The next thing is uh, cooking. I wanted everything to be 12 volt everything that could be 12 volts. I got a 500 watt hot plate, which works great as long as you use cookware that's not more than four inches at the base. I got a 1200 watt air fryer, which works great. And my third element that is not 12 volt is my water heater. So my laptop, my fridge, my freezer, my lights, my laptop, cell phone, iPad, um, my water pump, everything. I think that's everything. Oh, my heater's uh, um, thermostat. Everything is 12 volt. I got sockets instead of USB ports because the technology changes. When I built USB-C wasn't a big deal. Now everything I have, I want USB-C. So I don't have to switch out those outlets. I just get adapters. And there's an adapter for my laptop because it's instead of that brick that, that the Apple MacBook Pro comes with. I use bed mode 90% of the time because I'm alone 90% of the time. In bed mode, I got these three wire baskets and I made these covers to because the stuff would fall out because they aren't really, they're like wire instead of a wire mesh. So they are underneath the bed and they hold a lot of stuff. Um, and then this year, you can see the difference between my old photos and now is I took that backboard off. I wanted the big view. And in, when I had that backboard there, I needed tons of cushions to cover it, pillows to cover it. And it was just too many pillows. My last trip was to Assateague, my favorite place in the universe. And I'm going to actually apply to be a camp host there. Spending a month there would be the coolest thing. I could write. I'd get to meet all the people. I could make fun videos. I would take my keyboard and get one of those, um, one of those tents that's like a porch 
and take my keyboard and I could, I'd plug it into earphones so I didn't disturb people and I could get really good at playing the piano again. So I hope that works out. That would be very cool. All right, so my other changes, besides using it mostly in bed mode and because I got rid of that back thing, my biggest concern was Bear. I didn't want him jumping out or falling out. So my bug screen actually has, it attaches to rip stop and there's a zipper and it goes up the sides doesn't go far enough up the sides. I stupidly cut it short. I should have taken it all the way up the sides because then I could have rolled it up if I didn't want it. So I can get out through the back. I can open the door from the back. I can turn on the, uh, plug the heater in from the back. I can do stuff. And because it's attached to this ripstop, attached to these elastic loops that are holding the pillows in place. And then on the top is Velcro that's like heavy duty Velcro. Um, so it holds like up to 15 pounds. My dog can't get through it. Another thing I added from day one was I added the compass and then a rack that holds pencils with hooks for my mini frying pan and uh, you know various kitchen things and some books and paper. And I added these hooks. Like there's always a place for something without having to like fold it up and put it away somewhere. I'm a big hang it someplace kind of person because it's easy, it's quick, and I don't find it offensive to look at. I mean, in a video like this, it doesn't look so pretty because there's all kinds of unmatched things, but you can also see down there, I made this face to hold my freezer in place and to hide my heater. Um, my heater is under the seat, and when I was on my wonderful three-week southern trip, if I left Bear alone in the van, he kind of freaked out. He's made your oh. He's shivering. I have to pick him up and hold him. <laughs> um, I, he had, has major separation anxiety, so he would crawl under the seat to get to the place where he spent most of his time, which was in the cab, but then he couldn't get back out, and the heater's right there, and it's not turned on when he's home alone, but uh, but there's wires, and he's trapped, and I don't, I don't want... It just was like a problem waiting to happen, so I decided to build a piece of wood to aesthetically cover up the heater, and technically hold the fridge better in place. I also, the other horrible thing was uh, the shower. I had this little black and white check thing that aesthetically looked good with everything I was doing, the whole black and white theme. I kind of thought when I got it that it would hold, it would keep the water off of my feet um, after taking a shower, but instead like, <sighs> eight hours after a shower, it, you'd step in there to use the bathroom and it was still wet. So you'd get like soggy, gross, day old water on your feet. So I decided I needed to get a teak flooring. I ended up buying this on Amazon and cutting it to fit because um, teak is really hard to get. I would have had to have it shipped here and the shipping was more than the teak itself. So, And I also put a rod for closet so that like if I'm taking, like for the long trip, I took a lot of clothes because I was supposed to go to a fashion show afterwards and I'd hang it in there as a closet. And when I got to the campsite, I would uh, remove the clothes from the closet and put it on this. And because the cab doesn't get used, I'm by myself. So that becomes a storage space for all the stuff I had when I was traveling. If you're traveling with two people or if you're using the swivel seats, that's not an option to use for your storage place. But like when I go on a trip, I put, uh, I will travel with my awning and my butterfly chairs and I'll and maybe even like in the summertime my my uh, kayak and when driving to the place I put it all in here and when I get there well I suit the kayak outside but everything else that's extra I stuff in the front extra water extra empty water bottles oh I got a step I fell twice I got first I had a step that had steps I got my toe caught in it and landed flat on my knee. Then the second time I just fell. Um, so, and I had friends try to get in the van and they couldn't get in with my stupid, you know, like mini thing that, then I ran over two of them with the car because I forgot to pick them up when I was leaving. So I finally said, you know what, just go all out. It was like $219. It was easy to attach. I did it myself. Oh, another thing I did. I did this whole put wood on the doors thing. I made this little shelf 
so that I could put a soda in there or put some books in there or, you know, just have it as a useful space. And I bought these little cornice things because the window curves and I wasn't about to get into the whole bending wood thing. Um, but then after I finished everything and put the curtain back up and put the bug screen back up, you can't even really see the door. So that is everything. If I think of anything else, I will add it because that's the way it goes. Um, so thank you for watching. Ah, I'm going to try and post weekly. Um, I have no idea if I can succeed at doing that, but um, please follow if, if you can. It'll, it'll be fun. I'm taking, I have big trips planned. I'm going to go to Niagara Falls, Thousand Islands, uh, Vermont, and then up through Maine. I'm exploring, exploring a whole bunch of uh, Pennsylvania and New Jersey campsites for weekends. And hopefully I'll have like, those will be play dates with various dog friends from Instagram. And then um, I'm going back to Assateague in October. Oh, and in October on the 28th, I'm doing a people matching pet fashion show for Yorkie 911. And I will uh, be posting lots of videos about that. And we're gonna do some really fun things building up to it of like, doggy play dates, doggy slumber parties, doggy uh, shopping trips, stuff like that. So it should be fun. Okay, that's all.